Hi, my name is Ilshan Trucado and I would like to present the work done by Professor Lauriano and me in determining the intersection of two quadrics with maple. We want to present algebraic, geometric and computational issues that we have faced when implementing in maple the algorithm for analyzing and visualizing the intersection curve between two quadrics as presented in this paper. Here we have our problem how to simply and as quickly as possible determine the intersection curve between two quadrics. In the literature, we can find three papers from 2008, where the problem is solved and the intersection curves are characterized, but the implementation of this algorithm is too complicated. With our work, we aim to present a more direct and easy way to implement one algorithm to determine the intersection curve between two quadrics using a different approach. First, we start by determining the projection of the intersection curve into the plane, getting the so-called cut curve. Then, we analyze its topology, determine the critical and singular points, and finally, we make the lifting of the cut curve in two different ways through the exact parameterization of the intersection curve or, when it's not possible, through the discretization of the branches from the cut curve, topologically correct. From the mathematical point of view, we have two polynomials from degree 2 in Z variable, with polynomials P1 and Q1 from the first degree in X and Y variables and P0 and Q0 from degree 2 in X and Y variables too. We define two quadrics from this two implicit equation. This case, with two second degree polynomials in Z, is the most difficult to deal with and this is the only one we will restrict ourselves to. Let's look at this first example. We are at the intersection of a sphere and an hyperboloid. In the figure on the right, we can see a circle in green and an ellipse in black in the XY plane. These two curves, which we'll designate as silhouette curves, are obtained from the projection of the sphere and the hyperboloid. The sphere is projected on the XY plane inside the circle and the hyperboloid outside the black ellipse, thus defining an admissible region in which the intersection curve will be projected, which will be called the cut curve. We also observe a red curve which was computed as the projection of the intersection curve. We can see a small arc in the red curve that is outside the circle and thus outside the admissible region and then will not be part of the cut curve. To compute the projection of the intersection curve, we must compute the resultant of polynomials f in g in order to variable z. That will give us a curve at the most fourth degree. In the previous example, it would give us the entire curve in red, but in order to determine the cut curve, we must use the discriminants that provide us the boundary of the projection of both quadrics. So, the cut curve is just the portion of the curve that is limited by two conics. Lifting the cut curve can be done easily by using this equation for all points whose denominator do not vanish. When this happens, these points play a special role in the cut curve as singular points and will be seen later. When possible, the cut curve will be parameterized and lifted. When it is not possible to parameterize the cut curve, the branches of this curve will be discretized and all points lifted. Now our attention will be focused on the analysis of the cut curve through the computation of its critical and singular points, the intersection points with the silhouette curves and their branches and respective connections. We prove that singular points of the cut curve come from three different sources, either are in the line P1 equal to Q1 and also on the conic P0 equal to Q0, or if they are not on this line, they come from tangential intersection points or 
could still be the projection of singular points of one of the quadrics. If a point of the cut curve does not belong to the line P1 equal to Q1, as previously mentioned, its lifting can be easily carried out using this equation. On the other hand, if the point is in that line, its lifting can be done through an implicit equation of one of the quadrics. As for the tangential intersection points, or that are singular points of one of the quadrics. Their lifting can be also done through the first equation, since they are not found in that line. Now let's see how we can determine critical points. Critical points of the cut curve, turning and non-singular, come from the discriminant of S0 with respect to Y variable. Call it sigma zero after removing the singular and tangential intersection points. These points belong to the tangential and vertical lines, to the cut curve, and will be important in the discretization of this curve. Still using Maple, it was possible to analyze sigma zero and conclude its degree is bounded by 12 and any degree of any factor is less than or equal to 8. We are dealing with a zero aquatic curve and have computed singular and critical non-singular points of the cut curve. And then we are in conditions to make the discretization of this curve. In this example, for every real root of the sigma zero, we have one critical line where red points are singular and blue points are regular ones and branches are inviolate. With all this information, we know how our branches connect to each other. Here we have many particular cases and helpful identities. When P1 is identically equal to Q1, this means that S0 is a square and all points of the cut curve are singular and this curve will be a conic. When working with the, the quartic equation of S0, we have found this expression for S0 and uh, that is very helpful to prove many properties. In particular, when we have P1 is identically equal to Q1, intersecting this quartic with the line is the same to intersect the line with the difference of the discriminants, that are two conics. Also, with this identity of S0, we have concluded that points in the boundary of the projections are singular points of the cut curve. And, when it is important to compute points of the cut curve that touch the boundary of the admissible region, we have concluded that solutions of this complicated system are the same as the solutions of the intersection of these two conics. Now, let's look at the algorithm implemented in Maple. We start by computing S0. After that, we determine the admissible region with the discriminants. Then, we compute the singular points that lie on the line P1 equal to Q1 and lift them using polynomials that define one of the quadrics. It follows the computation of critical points of the cut curve that are not singular and their lifting using this identity. Then, compute regular points of the cut curve that are on the critical lines and how the branches connect and lift all these regular points using the same identity. The next step is to compute regular points of the cut curve that lie in the silhouette curves and make their lifting using the same identity as before. Next will be to determine the topology of the cut curve and then parameterize the branches of this curve if it is possible or discretize them. And finally, to obtain the intersection curve of the two quadrics by lifting the branches of the cut curve using the same identity and include all points computed before. Now let's look at our favorite example. F and G are these two polynomials that define two ellipses and we have computed S0 and the two discriminants that will be used to determine the admissible region. As we can see in this image, we have in red and blue the silhouette curves corresponding to each quadric. 
In black we have the cut curve that has some isolated points and the line of the singular point is dashed. We can also observe a point C that is outside the admissible region and will be excluded. Also, it is possible to observe the representation of three points A, D and F very close to each other and let's see the representation with more detail. With these images, we can see that point A would be a singular point. However, it is outside the admissible region and will be also excluded. On the other hand, we see that points D and F are tangential intersection points of the cut curve with the silhouette curves. Finally, and after discretization, we lift all points of the cut curve, obtaining in particular the lifting of B as a point of tangential intersection of the two quadrics. We have implemented this algorithm in 50 examples taken from the cited author's web page as a way to test the effectiveness of our algorithm. The results obtained are quite satisfactory. With our algorithm, we can identify the cases where exists tangential intersection of the quadrics and execution time that still can be improved with an optimization of the numbers of points chosen during the discretization. To complete, we introduced a new approach to analyze the intersection between two quadrics. New mathematical tools were provided for the analysis of the cut curve and the computation of critical and singular points in an approach that did not intend to classify the intersection curve of the two quadrics. This algorithm has been implemented in Maple and shows a very good practical behavior. Thank you for your attention.